Hi friends. How's everybody doing? Happy Friday. Hope everybody's doing well. Um, give me one second and let me quickly post um, in the group that we are live. And do this live now on YouTube. So, hi, Con. Mom, who's Con? Aunt Con. You know Aunt Con. I don't remember her. It's been a long time since we've seen Aunt Con. We need to uh, have a get together. Volume off. Hi, Crystal. Hi, Delia. Hi. Oh, Carol, shock. She is on time. Yes. <laughs> Hi, Cece. Hi, Ladybug Wishes. Hi, Karen. Hi, Star. And then I don't want to mess up somebody's name. Maridalia. Maridalia Ortiz. That's a pretty name if I'm saying it right. <laughs> How are you? Hi, Sherry. Hi, Duke's Designs and Creations. Hi, A Journey of a Random Musings and Cheryl. Hi, Joyce. It's so nice to talk to all of you. I'm so happy it's Friday. Y'all know I love my Friday. So just a quick introduction. Hi, I'm Carly Bell. I love to craft with machine embroidery and vinyl, and I like to share tutorials um, every week on Friday nights here live on YouTube at 7 o'clock Central Time. So you can come and join us. I try to be here most Fridays, um, and we get together, we talk about crafts, and I try to show you a little project that we can all do together. So it's been a week. Um, I do want to say my thoughts and prayers are with everyone in southwest Louisiana. Hurricane Delta is making landfall as we speak. I am in the New Orleans area and we are feeling the, the wind is kicking outside. I could hear it, but we are far from the center of the storm. So my thoughts and prayers are for with all our friends in the area where the storm is having a much larger impact. So, um, I just wanted to say that I, we've had a crazy week because this has been for us the seventh named storm that is predicted to come to the New Orleans area, but then yet has not, which I am knocking it on wood and saying all my prayers and be like, thank you very much. But it's, it's crazy the, the amount of scaredness and anxiousness that has been going on in the past few months with having a hurricane predicted to come to you nearly every week. So I, I, I can't wait for hurricane season to be over. I'm, I'm done with it. <laughs> As I'm sure a lot of other people are too. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Husband, come give me a thumbs up. I am on. So I hope everyone has had a good week. Hi, Eartha. Yeah, it's Wendy too over there in Port Island, I'm sure. Um, so yes, prayers to everyone. Okay, yes, so this is our little get together we call Sip and Stitch, where we have a little drink of your choice and come do a craft project together or talk about crafts. So I, one of my favorite drinks is a painkiller. And last week, I forgot my drink, yelled at my husband, hurry up and made me one and brought it up here and I told y'all about it the ingredients for it and I have to give a huge shout out to one of my new best friends Carol that's in our group and here on YouTube now because she picked up on a little nugget of information last week but I was telling you how I make my drink it's rum and juice and coconut and usually you sprinkle a little nutmeg on top but I didn't have any nutmeg well guess what she put in the mail some nutmeg and she put a cute little sticker on it with our Sip and Stitch logo. And this is officially my painkiller powder. <laughs> so she is the best. Love, love Carol. So thank you so much. Um, 
Brenda, the, the girls need one of those drinks tonight. <laughs> I'm Brenda. I'm surprised you're here. I didn't think your grandkids were going to let you watch. <laughs> so, um, all right. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's see. A couple fun things I wanted to tell y'all that was going on. Ooh, I have some exciting things I'm working on. So hopefully next, I'll have it together. Hopefully by next week to where I can... I'll actually plan ahead and tell you what I'm going to do next week. Uh, Brenda says her grandkids are playing on the iPad. iPad. Where is she? There she is. iPad. <laughs> That's one of the few ways that I could even do this on a Friday night. Oops, sorry, my. I don't think I have this screwed on burger type. But, um, but yeah, it's great things. <laughs> Um, okay, I'm actually going to do something out of the ordinary and try to plan ahead. So, um, I am a big fan of and brilliance software. And, um, I currently have Essentials and Stitch Artists Level 2. And that is a digitizing software and I'm trying to learn it. I really, um, I need to spend more time playing around with it, but I have yeah. made, uh oh, what's wrong? Okay. I have made a couple yeah. of designs. What's the matter? Uh. What you on about? Uh. Uh. Got it? Uh. What's the matter? My movie got off. Well, how are you turning it back on? Can you find it again? Well, I think if you press this, it shows you all the things we were watching. Try that. Ooh, iPad's not working as bad for us. <laughs> okay, so where was I? I have been playing around with digitizing things myself and I've made a few designs. Um, and I I have a website, carlybell.com. It's, it's always been my blog, my area where I post um, my tutorials my, all written out and then I have the videos kind of um, embedded into the into the post so you can go there and see all my tutorials um, on my website but I figured out how to add a shop page and that is where I want to be able to sell my digitized embroidery designs that I make and I've only got one set so far I made like a set of smiley face emojis um, and I have that on there and they're for instant digital download. So I feel very fancy because I'm not a tech person and I, it took, it took me a little while to figure out <laughs> how to set this up, but I made a cute design a while back. I still, I'm still tweaking it and excuse me one second, you know, I'm a bad camera person. Um, I made one design, I made a couple, this one, but I'm still, I'm still tweaking it. This is one of my test stitches. It says maker of all the things. Um, so next week, I'm gonna tweak this design a little bit more and then I'll have it on my website. So if you would like to buy it, you can download it. And we will make a shirt and this is gonna be a pocket design on the shirt because a lot of people in my group, that's something that they struggle with is placement for pocket designs, like on like a woman's, a women's, T that doesn't have an actual pocket on it, but you want the pocket design. So that's what we'll do next week. So I think that that will help some people. I could show you how I figure out placement for a pocket or a logo, a chest logo, if that's what you, what you would call it. So this is the design. I'm also going to have it in a sketch option. So this is a satin stitch and I'll have it in sketch as well. And then I have another cute design. Um, but this is me making plans for next week. So now I have to hold myself accountable. <laughs> Are y'all talking about Carol? Y'all know she, she, uh, actually Carol did a really good job. She showed, well, she posted it in the group. She did a raincoat with a chest monogram on it and she did excellent. So, um, okay, let me go back and look here. Uh, I want that on a shirt as either embroidery or SVG. Oh yeah, I can also include the SVG file for the same thing. That's something. So, oh yeah, Eartha. Um, 
uh, pointed out, and Brilliance has a new update for Essentials and Stitch Artists, and she just downloaded it. Yes. So in the, so if you go to the Facebook group, um, if you're not a member already, there is a link down below for you to join. Um, the Facebook group is great. We talk about stuff all the time. There's lots of good information there, and I've tried to organize it to where it's easy to find. So when you go to the top of the group, they have options I can show you. Um, so like, this should be something like, looks like when you look at it. So there is about, discussion, unit, announcements, and so on. You, so the discussion is usually the feed where you know we're always looking at, um, but units is where I have, try to have all the information. So I have a whole section on how to get started with embroidery, um, talking about if you haven't bought a machine before, how to choose the right machine for you. There's a supply list. There's a section all about stabilizers. And then, uh-oh, I did something. Uh, then there's also a section about, let me keep going down. Oh, I have a section on where to buy blanks. Uh, one of the next sections I'm working on is where I buy designs from, like list all my favorite places I buy designs. And then I'd like to also have a section on fonts because a lot of people are like, where's the best place to buy fonts or what's your favorite font? So we'll have a section for that. And then we have a whole in brilliant section. So that's what I want to tell you. In that in brilliant section, I have a video showing you how to update your software to the latest um, in brilliance. And actually it, it might even, it changed a little bit since I recorded that video because at first, when you would go to the Embrilliance download page, the, when you first scroll down, you know, download Embrilliance for Mac or for Windows, it said the older version. And you had to scroll down further to see the newer version. Now that newer version is at the top. So that's the only difference. Um, it's still down there at the bottom, so you could still follow the video to find it. But if you go to the downloads page in Embrilliance, you'll notice the newest version is at the top of the screen now. It's officially released. Before that, it was in beta version, so that's why it was at the bottom. But it has a lot of bug fixes, so that's good. Um, and then also in the, in the units, I've started a silhouette section. So I'll slowly be adding videos in that section showing you um, different tips and tricks with using your Silhouette Cameo and the Silhouette Studio software. Okay, let me go back to the group so I can to the Facebook, I mean, uh, YouTube. All right. Um, doot, 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 doot. So, do you wanted to know which stitch, I guess, which stitch artist. Um, so the update is for the whole Embrilliance platform. Cause if you, if you have any Embrilliance programs, you only need to download one program. That one program is all you need for essentials, enthusiasts, um, stitch artist level one, two, three, think density repair kit, which is another thing they offer, and alpha tricks, I think. But all the, the main ones, essentials, enthusiasts, and all the stitch artists, you only need one download. It's just you entering when you upgrade and buy add-ons or different things. All you do is go enter a new serial number into your program and then once you add that serial number it'll say oh you've added stitch artists and you hit okay and then all of a sudden new buttons pop up for you that weren't there before but everything else is it's all the same you don't have to open a stitch artist program you don't have to open an essentials program or an enthusiast program so um i have for people who don't know what essentials is um if you look in the description box below i have links to the Embrilliance website. I am an affiliate for them, so if you do decide to buy the program, I'd greatly appreciate it if you use my link to purchase it. And then I have a blog post that I wrote that's all about Ecent uh, and Brilliance and tells you about the different programs that they have. Um, Phyllis wants to know, how recent is the update? So I think as of like yesterday, they made the update the official new version. So if three weeks ago you downloaded and you downloaded that first option you had, I think it was version 
1.654. Now they have 1.655. Let me check. Let me see what my version is. So about in brilliance. I now have a 1.65. So I think the old version was 1.64. So you can go to in brilliance. Go to uh, hit in brilliance. Hit ah, about in brilliance. And then this window will pop up and it will tell you your version number. So check that. If you have anything lower than 1.165, then go to the Embrilliance website, click the Downloads button, click the, um, the Download for Embrilliance, whether you have Mac or PC, it'll say 1.165 next to it. Install it. All you have to do is close, you don't have to uninstall your old version or anything like that. You just have it, make sure it's closed. And then when you reopen it again, it will be the new version. That's It's super, super simple. And then you could go check your preferences and make sure you have the new updated version. All right. Last off-topic thing before we get to our bib. We're doing a baby bib tonight in case I didn't say that already. <laughs> We're going to do a baby bib. My friend had a baby yesterday. She needs a cute little applique bib with her name on it. Um, last off-topic thing. I am super excited for if something that's gonna happen in the future once I figure it out. So as I said, I'm a big and brilliance fan. I have Essentials and Stitch Artists. I am going to purchase Enthusiast probably this week. As soon as, when I have time to sit at the computer, <laughs> I'm going to purchase Enthusiast. And Enthusiast is an add-on to Essentials. You can't just, you can buy it by itself, but then you, you, won't, you'll, you won't have the capabilities that Essentials has. And one of the main things Essentials has is the ability to resize things. So I think if you only bought Enthusiast, you wouldn't be able to do that. And that's a big feature, and that's really important to have. So it's kind of an add-on to Essentials. But Enthusiast, uh, big features it has is stitch editing. Like you can actually edit the stitches of a design, single points, which I'm eager to learn about. And uh, you can add a knockdown stitch to a design. So we a knockdown stitch is something I want to do for another sip and stitch. So say you have a really fuzzy towel and uh, you want to put a monogram on it, but you're scared the monogram is just going to sink and not be super visible. You could do a knockdown stitch and it's kind of like a fill stitch. And then you put your monogram on top of it. So I can create a knockdown stitch that goes around, say I want to do a B. I can create a knockdown stitch that will go perfectly around the B. Um, but the reason why I'm buying it, the, the main reason is I'm getting a new hoop for my persona. So this is my persona. So the biggest frame on this one is eight by eight. And that's on it here. This is my Durkee easy frame. So um, Durkee made a new repositionable hoop for this machine and it's eight by 14. So essentially it would slide on this way. I could do an eight by eight section. I would take it off, turn it around 180, slide it back on and it could stitch the other side. So it's kind of like how the five by 12 hoop works on the PE 800 or 770. It will work on here, but I need enthusiasts to create a custom multi, multi positionable hoop and split the design. So I'm super excited about that. That's gonna be something for the future once I get it figured out on my persona um, owners. And also Durkee made a fancy hoop like that for the six needle and 10 needle brother machines um, where you could go 12 by 24, which is huge. So that's for the future. Let me get back to the chat and see what I missed. Um, yeah, Carol, there goes your wallet, right? <laughs> um, I got my hoop from Sewing Machines Plus. Um, I am waiting for them to, it's not available online yet. So I'm waiting for them to have it available online and then I will give y'all the link. And, um, and once I figure it all out, I will teach y'all how to do it and teach you how to use Enthusiast. Um, Karen X, does in Brilliance automatically update itself? No, it does not. You have to go update it but you don't have to pay for an update. So when I was looking at buying this new hoop, they were trying to tell me I needed to have PE Design 11 
in order to use it. And I was like, mm, not buying a new program. I already have in Brilliance and I love it. And I've already invested in Stitch Artist and the PE Design 11 costs like $800. I was like, no, I'm not, I'm not doing it. I'll figure it out how to do it with Brilliance. <laughs> so that's what I'm doing. Um, and one of the things I don't like about PE Design is that they come out with a new version every year, every couple years. And if you have the older version, you have to buy an upgrade to the newer version. And within Brilliance, you don't have to do that. And I, that makes me like it a lot better. Um, so you should, uh, Carol says you should not have to delete. No, you don't have to uninstall your older version of Embrilliance um, in order to update to the new one. Just leave it alone, install the new one. It does it all by itself. Um, okay, Linda says she still doesn't know how to download and unzip a file. Um, if you, Linda, if you look, look at my YouTube channel, there is an applique video. In that applique video, I show you how I go to the website, buy the design. It comes up in my downloads folder. Um, all I do is double click it to unzip it. And then it, then you can see the list of the designs and it comes in multiple formats. And then how I open up for me, I use PES because I have brother machines and I open it in Brilliance. So if you watch that applique video, it should show you everything on how to do that. All right. Thank you, Cynthia. I think everyone here in New Orleans is doing fine. We have a little bit of wind outside, but everything is fine. Um, Carly. Okay. Carol. Carol is my helper because I miss a lot of things. So when she starts putting things in all cap, I see it. <laughs> All right, my Embrilliance upgrade says it cannot download it securely, so cannot open it. Um, Jill, do you have a MacBook and do you have Catalina operating system? Because there are some issues with that, but I think Embrilliance has fixed it. Sipping on a shake, Amanda. Okay, that reminds me, taking a sip. Jill has a PC. Okay, so that's not it. Um, I wonder what it means by I cannot download it securely. Hmm. Okay. I'm going to recommend Jill that you go to the contact me page on, so if you go to Embrilliance's website, go to, go to the contact me and they have a little form you can fill out, put your name, your email and tell them your issue. They usually get back to you the next day. So give as much details as you can. If you could even take a screenshot of the error and you can upload that to your your ticket when you um, when you send it, uh, that hopefully will help. Because off the top of my head, I don't know. And I'm not a PC person. Okay. All right. So Linda is using the 625 and the 800 brother. So you're going to look for... PES files and um, that's what you, Linda, do you have in Brilliance Essentials? Or are you just going to your, straight from buying the design to your embroidery machine? Hi, Zexy Girl 57 glad you're here. Uh, that's all we talk about is embroidery. <laughs> Um, if you're interested in learning, you know, hang out with us tonight, watch, watch what we're doing and then join the Facebook group and go. If you saw earlier, I showed how do you go to the unit section of the Facebook group. That is a great place to start if you're super brand new and you know, you, you're thinking about getting a machine and don't know which one to get. Um, that goes over all of them there. Okay. So Linda, you only have your machine. Do you have a USB stick? Hi, Terry. Um, yes, my cute little girl's all in. No, let's see, what's she doing now? I gotta watch her. She is playing with a piece of contact paper. Oh, I can't turn my thing. Okay, she's just sitting playing. <laughs> okay, Linda, yes, you have a USB. 
Okay, so you're gonna plug your USB in your computer. When you plug it in, it should come, it should pop up as either like a G drive or an F drive or an H drive, some kind of letter. So once you locate your downloads, so when you buy a design and you click your downloading it, you have a downloads folder on your computer. And then you it will look as a zip file and all you have to do is double click it and it should unzip and now it will have the folder icon and then you open that and it's going to give you options like uh, either sizes or formats. So you look for PES and then most of the time when you buy a design it comes in multiple sizes like 4x4, four 5x7, four, um, 6x10. You pick what size you want. Once you have just that simple file that has the size you want, .pes, you copy that and then you paste it, uh, then go to your USB drive on your Windows and then paste it on your USB drive. Don't have it in a folder on your USB drive, just paste it right in the first screen you have on your USB drive. Then eject your USB and plug it in your machine and press the USB icon on your screen and it should be there. Hi, Sue from Tennessee. Hi, Dawn's World of Baby. Oh, Brenda, good point. Maybe the antivirus is rejecting it for Jill. Um, okay, Star says she had the same problem as Jill and she used a Chrome browser and got the same message. It was suggested to try a different browser. It worked using Firefox. So try that out, Jill. Download the Firefox internet browser and then go and try and download it. Um, Firefox always opens more than Chrome. Okay, good points, ladies. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Okay, I think I've gotten off topic a lot. So let's go ahead and get started um, with our baby bib. So I have a job for y'all. So tonight we're doing a really simple design. Uh, let me show you. So the little girl's name is Westlin. And so all we're going to do is a W applique with a script, her name and script going across. So, um, I have a cute little ruffle bib I got from Blank's Boutique. Oh, and I forgot, I need to put a link for this down below, but it's blanksboutique.com. Cute little bibs. Uh, if you're in the Facebook group, in the unit section, I have a whole list of places where to get blanks. So there's there's a few more options out there. Um, if you go to Blanks Boutique and these are out of stock, um, look in the Facebook group in the unit section. But here's my little bib. So this, you have two options with this bib. Um, oh, also before I get started, once I, once I start working, I'm probably gonna miss your questions. Go ahead and ask them. And Miss Carol has been nice enough to offer to write those questions down. So when she sees me sitting again and I'm paying attention, <laughs> she's gonna put them up there for me again. Yes, Con, Westland. This is Marissa's baby. Marissa and, uh, and Cody just had a baby yesterday. Tiffany's little sister, Westland. It's different, I like it. So, um, okay, the bib. You have, without the T. No, it has the T. W-E-S-T-L-Y-N. West Lynn. Yes, I got it. Yeah, you got a T in her name. Is it not supposed to have a T in her name? Oh, crap. We got to check Facebook now before I spell it wrong. <laughs> okay. Hold up. Check it, Con. Let me go to Marissa's Facebook page. Um, okay. Two options tonight. Um, you can do this on a... Don't text me, just tell me on here. Um, you can do a four by four hoop. I'm gonna do a five by seven hoop to make it a little bit bigger. Okay, let me look. I went to her Facebook page before I started to make sure I wouldn't spell it wrong. <laughs> Cause you know, Con knows. And if my friend um, Jessica is here from high school, I cannot spell, I'm, I'm horrible. I can't even spell Marissa. Okay. Here we go. 
Thank God for good friends to help out. That's right. Okay. Baby. Oh, you're right. It doesn't have a T. <laughs> it is W-E-S-L-Y-N. Okay. Got it. Thank you, Con, for pointing that out because I definitely would have gave her a baby bib with her baby's name spelled wrong. West Lynn, not West Lynn. Okay. So, in brilliance. Let's turn y'all around. Can y'all see this? Probably not the best angle. Okay. So, I'm going to click on the letters. I have her name spelled here. And because this is a BX font, it's as easy as backspace. Enter. And so now it's here, but I, now I need to knock it over. Um, so that the this is a script font and I want them to connect. So I just use my cursors on my keyboard. Westland. Okay, now I'm gonna center this. So I just take this square here and make sure it's the center. Bam, okay. Yay! <laughs> All right, oh, who said brownie? Now I want a brownie. Okay, hi Stacy. All right. <laughs> 10 points for Khan. Khan, you want me to make something for you? <laughs> All right, so. Back to business. If I miss your question, go ahead and ask it, you know, when, when it comes to you and ask it, and then I will answer it when we sit down again. Bib, Blanks Boutique. You have the choice of doing a four by four design. Looks perfectly fine on here. I chose a four inch tall applique. Um, oh, Carol's saying thumbs up. Okay, well, let's let Elise do her job while we're thinking about it. Elise. You have to do your job. Hello, everyone. Okay, come see. What's your job? Click that bell and make sure you subscribe. What do I say after? Give this video a thumbs up. What? And give us a, a thumbs up. <laughs> Thank you, helper. I love you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mommy. Mommy, yes. okay. Mommy, okay. Mommy, okay. Mommy, okay. Mommy. Okay. I gotta go make. Okay. I gotta go make. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, and there yeah, she goes. Yeah, yeah. Crazy. Yeah, yeah. See, Brenda, I told you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. 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 Are you watching Anna and Elsie? Elsie and Anita. Elsie and Anna. No, Elsie and Anna. All right. Thank you so much, guys. You having a margarita? She is sipping, girls. She is. Yeah, 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 <laughs> Hi, Cindy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, calm down. All right. You have the choice of doing. I lost it. Where'd the grid go? Did I put it down here? Yeah. Oh, there it is. Okay. You could do a four by four, or you could do a five by seven. Now, I kind of had intentions of doing four by four, but I chose the applique font. Yes, order me a brownie too. Um, <laughs> with ice cream on top, please. Uh, I chose a four inch tall applique W, but it was too, it was, it's actually a little bit wider. I could have shrunk it in in brilliance, but I just went ahead and left it. So it's gonna be four inches tall, but a little wider than four inches. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put it on a five by seven hoop. So now you, I need your help. Um, which fabric should I fill the W in? We're going with pinks and purple pinks and either pink and purple or pink and mint. So pink and purple thread options have that W outlined in pink and the name in purple. We have option number one, Elise's favorite, the rainbows. Another bright one, option number two, a heronbone rainbow. Okay, option number three, now we're changing color schemes. This will be like a pink and mint. We have pink and mint diamonds. And we have pink and mint kind of chevron looking. Okay, put in your vote. Rainbow, 
rainbow herringbone, diamonds, or pink and mint arrows. I don't know what these are. Four, number four, <laughs> or chevron. Tell me what y'all think. Okay, rainbow. Okay, we got two rainbows, chevron, diamond, three or four, diamond, chevron, rainbow, diamonds. Oh, y'all killing me. Somebody count up the winners. <laughs> and I think Marissa, like, th she would love any of them. She wouldn't, she, like, because some people like soft colors for babies. She wouldn't be opposed to brighter colors, I think. Um, all right, let's see. Okay, I think we have like four for rainbows. Yeah. You want me to let Elise pick? Elise. I think we have a lot of diamonds, yeah. A toss like Carol said, a toss between rainbow and diamond. Okay, I'll let Elise. Okay, sorry if my sorry if I froze up. I got a phone call. Okay. So I think Carol said it's a toss up between um rainbows or diamonds or just make four bibs sure <laughs> okay karen asks where did the w applique come from i bought a huge font set a super long time ago i don't even know where it's from it came in there but i did find a similar applique font and i linked it below that creative appliques had it's like a basic um capital letter applique um, set and it's linked below. Okay, I need my assistant to choose. I know she's going to choose rainbows because she picked this one for me to make a mask for her. Lisey, Elise, which one do you think the baby would like better? Does the baby like rainbows? I don't know. It's just a baby. Maybe. It's a little baby girl. She would like the rainbows. You think she would like the rainbows? Yeah, girls love rainbows. Girls love rainbows. <laughs> okay, we'll go with the rainbows. I think Marissa will like this one too. This one's fun. Um, and I can also make her something later with this too. Okay, so this is the applique. So now let's go ahead and hoop. All right, so I'm gonna do my fancy contraption where I put y'all on my pegboard. Okay, so I think we got a good view there. All right, this is just my little ironing board thing. I make, I get a lot of questions about this um, because, well, let me turn on my iron speaker. With a lot of embroidery projects, you need, a, you need to use your iron. I have two irons. I have this little mini one, which I love. And I have a big um, cordless one. Um, and I didn't want to bust out the ironing board every time I wanted to do a project. So I made this ironing board. Can you tell I love rainbows? Um, <laughs> all this is is a piece of plywood wrapped in an old towel. And I used a staple gun to staple on the fabric. And I think underneath this fabric, I have some of that heat resistant... Um, ironing board fabric I bought from Joann's uh but that's all this is, is is my little portable small ironing board and I can take it off my craft table when I need a smooth surface but I use it all the time to hoop things so here's my five by seven hoop we're doing this tonight on the PE 770 and I'm using this is my tear away um, this is fusible tear away, but we don't need to iron anything tonight. So I am just cutting. This is the last bit of my roll. I don't know what I'm going to do with this tiny piece after, but I'll save it for something. Okay, so I'm going to make sure this is kind of on the tight side. So here's my tear away. 
this, I've done tear away on these bibs before and they should be good. Usually when doing knit fabric, I don't recommend just using tear away, but for these bibs, they have a layer of terry cloth behind the knit front of the bib and I think that helps it to where the, the tear away is enough. Okay, so we're gonna hoop only the tear away. Come on, I made it too tight. Okay, there we go. And then push the inner part of the hoop in. And so that this is nice and taut. Then we use the grid that came with the hoop. This is what I use all the time for figuring out placement. And I have a um, disappearing ink marker. Uh, links to all of my supplies are in the description box below and also um, in the Facebook group in the unit section, I have a whole supply list. Um, so I, they have little holes in this plastic and I just use my marker to make some markings and I make some crosshairs. Mom! What? Mom, look, it's magnet. Mom, look, it's magnet. Yes, it is. Please don't mess with my pencil. That's so cool. I know, but you're not supposed to play with that. Go pick it up. Go pick it up. Okay. So, we are going to do something called floating. As you see, I only, um, I only hooped the stabilizer. We're not hooping the bib. Because the bib is actually too small for this hoop. So, now I'm going to stick this in a bag. And spray some temporary spray adhesive. Actually, I should have waited because this Mommy. marker disappears really quickly, Mommy. so I could barely see it. Now. Mommy, yeah, spray. Spray. That's with a S. Here, give me a high five, girl. You are so smart. <laughs> that is right, Elise. Okay, so here's a bib. Again, I'm using my grid, and I'm turning it horizontal for this project. Mommy, yes. mom, yes. yes. Did you know I, I have some. Some baby bibs and my. I went and looked for baby, baby baskets. You have some? Go find one for me because I was looking for one to show people before we started and I couldn't find one. I have a lot of them. Okay. I saved all her bibs and I gave them to her for her to play with her baby dolls. <laughs> okay, so using my grid, I'm kind of eyeballing the center. It's kind of easy because the bib is almost just as big as the sewing field and I'm making sure. It's right in the middle of these uh, ruffles, the, the seam here, and I have a seam here. And just make sure it's straight. And then I'm gonna do my same placement marks on the bib. Ooh, I can hear the wind as I kick in, kick in. I'm gonna blow all the stuff around outside. Okay. All right, so now there's my placement mark. So now I have my, so this is going to hook on the machine this way. So I'm turning it like this and I can barely see my marks because as soon as I spray the adhesive, they start going away. There we go. Found one. You found one? No, that's not one mommy made though. So that is one of your old bibs. Okay, so looking at those placement marks, looking at this placement marks, all you are doing is lying this down on top of it right to try and, and hoop up those um, placement marks. Oh, I saw Carol saying, I hope, yes. If for some reason the video just shuts off while I'm working, it's because the power went out. So just a disclaimer there. <laughs> My phone will still be on. But maybe I'll switch to my data. Maybe maybe it will still play. I don't know. Because I know if the internet go, the internet will go out if the power goes out. But maybe I'll use my data on my phone, which I am almost out of. <laughs> okay. So I am just looking at these purple marks on the stabilizer and making sure this lines up nicely on all the sides with the purple marks on my bib. 
bibs are super easy to, to place because you could lift up all the sides nicely. When you're working with a big giant blanket, it's kind of hard, but this bib and burp cloths, super easy to do. Okay, now one more step before we go on. We are going to use something called water soluble topper. The front of this bib is knit and I find with knit fabrics and anything with a satin stitch, you get a much crisper finished stitch when you use something called water soluble topper. So I already had some of this cut. Let me make it. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do is pin this. So I go through the topper, go through the bib, and I'm gonna go through the stabilizer. And this is gonna further help keep the bib in place and not shift on accident, say like when I'm carrying it and putting it on the machine if, I, if it nudges or anything. So I'm just gonna use pins. I am gonna be careful though that the pins, so this grid is what we call the sewing field. There's a little, there's little spaces in this hoop that is outside of the sewing field. That's where I'm gonna try and put my pins so that my needle on my embroidery machine doesn't actually in, accidentally hit the pin while it's sewing. Also, my design is kind of really right here and it doesn't go on the edges, so I know that I could put my pins right here and my needle's not gonna hit it because that's not where the design is going. So. And so this just helps keep the water soluble topper in place. And because I'm floating, this also makes me feel better about my item that I'm embroidering, not moving on accident and messing up, look, you know, looking like it's messed up um, while it's stitching. So I just do the four corners. All right, and then we are ready to go to the machine. We're gonna come back here in a little while and do prepare the applique, but for now, we'll go to the machine. And the first step is to stitch the placement stitch, and then we'll go back over to the craft table. So, let's see if I can give you a view of the machine. Yeah. Mommy, What's up? today could you today I want you to make make a shirt. You need a shirt? Okay. Maybe after a while, after I'm done making this baby present, okay? No, I wanna show you this. Okay, you show me. She thinks she thinks make I just a shirt for this make a shirt for this baby. This baby. I think I have a shirt that might fit this baby. Yay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let me play. Let me let me finish making this first. Okay. Mom, I'm gonna give. I have the perfect pants for her. Okay. So when you turn your machine on, it says please touch the display. So I have a PE770. This is an older model of the PE800, but essentially they're the same machine except the PE800 has a color screen and has a, the interface is a little bit different and, and nicer. It's definitely a, 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 a small upgrade from this machine, but it still stitches the same speed. It has the same size hoops um, and all of that. So I have, I need to resave the design because we, we changed it. Remember that Carly, cause I'd already had it saved on here. Okay, so let me do that again. So save stitch file as, okay. And I'm gonna save it as W-E-S-L-Y-N with no T, save. And now I'm gonna go delete the other one I had on there so I don't make the mistake of that one being on, delete. Now eject my USB. Okay, now I'll plug it in my machine. Okay, so plugged in, I press the USB button. 
and it's retrieving and it's probably going to be the last design because it started with a W. I see it here. I hit upload and I see a problem. It has the W and the name and oh, I know what the problem is. Okay, so I have to go again. So here's a lesson. Um, it only has a W. It doesn't have the placement stitch, the tack down stitch, the satin stitch. And I could see that in the steps because there's only two steps. There should be one, two, three, four steps. Um, and it's because and in brilliance, I have things the same color thread. And when it's the same color thread, it's going to automatically combine those steps. So back to the computer. Sorry if this is not the best view. Okay, plug this back in. All right, the way we do this, so on my screen I can see this is the tack down stitch, this is the placement stitch, this is the finishing stitch. The tack down is a peacock blue. I'm gonna click it and I'm just gonna change it to a green. Okay, and I'm gonna I'm gonna label this as applique position. All you do is right click the color and it'll do that. All right, so now this is a different color. It's peacock blue and I'm gonna label this applique material. And now the pink is a color and the purple is a color. So I should have four separate steps. They're all different colors in the machine. So I'm gonna go back to file, save stitched file as, and I'll re-click Westland so it just replaces it. Save, replace. And now I have to eject my USB. Okay, so back to the machine. Plug this back in. Give it a second. Click USB. And we go backwards, there's W again. Upload. Okay, now I have a W, a W. I'm gonna hit adjust. I'm gonna hit the needle with the plus and minus. That's gonna let me jump around the design. Sorry, y'all can't see anything. Okay. Still can't see anything, sorry. The glare, is that better? All right, let me start over again. So when you first open this, if you have the PE770, this is what it looks like. If you have the PE800, it's gonna look a little different. And I think when you have the PE800, you don't have to hit this adjust button. They, they just have a needle with the plus and minus. You should see that. So that lets you jump around. The spools of thread lets you jump around steps. The needle with the plus and minus ju jumps around individual stitches. I wanna look at the steps right now. So I have a W, so I have a placement, a tack down, a satin stitch finishing, and then her name. So now everything is right. So I'm gonna back up to the first one. All right, and now I'm, I wanna check the layout. Because on my machine, it always shows me the same direction. But here you see it's turned. But I'm putting my bib on the machine this way, so it would be upside down. So I need to rotate it. And I just have to hit rotate 90 degrees and it should automatically turn it. It's not letting me. Why not? Rotate. Nope. Okay, let me back out. Okay, upload. All right, so I'm gonna hit adjust, layout, and then it should pop up. It's going wrong direction. There we go. I'll just give it, my machine always takes a minute to show the preview now. So if that makes sense, it's going to stitch to where the W is upright. Okay, I hope all that was visible and it made sense. <laughs> all right, so I'm loading my hoop on. You slide on the bracket, lift it and make sure it's on there good. I'm going to load, I'm doing the W in pink, so I'm going to go ahead and load the pink thread. 
and I'm going to do the first three stitches in the pink thread. Okay, close my thread, put my presser foot down. I'm going to back up. Now I'm back to my steps on my screen. I know you can't see it right now, but now it's ready to stitch. So I'm going to hit start. So now it's just going to stitch the outline of the W. Where did I get the thread stand? I got it on Amazon and it is linked down below. Uh, Deal, you wants to know, am I embroidering through the front and the back? Yes. I'm not taking the bib apart. That's why I'm, one of the reasons why I'm using tearaway, so there won't be really any stabilizer left on the back, but you will see the threads on the back. Needle. I use a 7511 ballpoint organ needle and I have those linked below. Alright, oh I forgot. I really don't like this font. I need to buy a new one. Okay, for some reason this font, when it does the placements, the placement stitch, it goes over it twice. It doesn't just do the outline of the W and stop. No, it goes over it again. So what I can do because I, I think it's done now. But I could stop it and cut the threads and I don't need it to go over that much. Um, okay, give me one second, Carol. All right, so I'm taking this off and let's go over to the craft table and then I'll answer some questions. All right, hit me, Carol. Uh, Carol, what you got? Okay, I'm here. See any questions? Okay, you have five. I'm ready. Okay, while I'm waiting for Karen to um, Car why do I keep saying Karen, Carol, to um, she said say her way so good on that. Okay, um, while I'm waiting for the question to pop up, all I'm doing is cutting a piece of fabric that is a little bit bigger than my W. So I'm just laying the fabric over the W and making sure that I cut it to where it's taller and wider, slightly. I do it in a weird way. I make little notches and then I cut straight across. Okay, what you said you, wait, where you buy the blank bibs? Yes, I buy them from Blank's Boutique. Um, ARB Blank's also has them. Okay, I saw you had some rolled up maybe vinyl and a holder attached to your shelf. Where did you get that? Oh, um, this is cool. So real quick before I go to Car uh, Carol. This, these are, I think they are, they're from Ikea and they're meant to hold like grocery bags. They cost like four or five dollars, but somebody figured out that they, they, the vinyl rolls fit in it nicely. So if you have an Ikea close, they're only like $5. I think Joann's and other craft stores sell things that are similar now, but I'm sure they're more expensive. Okay. Let me go back. Um, I'd love to know more about BX fonts in case you need an idea for one Friday night. Okay, yes. BX fonts are super cool, and they're exclusive for the Embrilliance software program, and that you can just use your keyboard to, when you buy a font, um, you don't have to import each individual letter and then try to align them and make it look pretty. You could just pick your font, type your name, it aligns it and spaces it for you. And then you can go and nudge things like I did with the cursive font. Okay. 
Are you going to put the material over the soluble stabilizer? Yes, I will. So when it does the satin stitch on the applique, the inner part is just gonna go over the applique material. I find that comes out smooth. It's the knit material where the water soluble topper really helps and it's gonna give it a nice clean edge on the outer part of the, the satin stitch. So yeah, I can just put the applique material over it. All right, Cindy, what it, what is the biggest hoop your machine has? The PE770 or PE800? Technically the biggest hoop is five by seven, but you do have the option to use a, what they call a repositionable hoop. And I have a video all about this. This is a five by 12 hoop that is special for this machine. And if you see, normally the bracket only goes in two places, but this one has four. So you can have it here, stitch something, and then you move the hoop and then put it there. You need to have software to do this. The Embrilliance Essentials is what I use. And if you go to my YouTube channel and look under videos, I have a video that says how to use the five by 12 jumbo or large hoop on your machine. And watch that video and it shows you step by step how I use it. Okay. Doot, doot, doot. Um, does BX fonts work with PES? So BX is a format. PES is a format. You can use either one of them in Embrilliance. Once you say you use BX, you, you install the BX fonts in Embrilliance so that um, they're just a list of them in the program for you to click on and use your computer to type it out. Um, once you make your design, like I made the W and then I merged the BX font with it, I saved it, the whole thing, as the PES file. So it goes to my machine as a PES file. My machine won't recognize BX. That is strictly for the Embrilliance program. Does that make sense? Okay, another question. Will you add more soluble stabilizer for the name? I don't think so. Usually when I do my stabilizer and I have an applique and the name is going over the applique, like I said, it's the knit fabric that's tricky, but this is a woven cotton. It will go over this rather nicely. If you are worried that it won't though, you can always, you know, just hold another layer of water soluble topper on top of your applique before you start stitching the name. Are you going to put uh, iron the fabric? Yes, I'm about to do that. Okay. I'm gonna remember, if I remember. <laughs> okay, I'm cutting my applique fabric. Okay, I was a little worried that the W would be smaller and you wouldn't see the rainbows inside of it. So here's my rainbow. So I am gonna put, let me put y'all on the headboard. camera person. Okay. All right. No, it's not sticking. Okay, I think I've exhausted my luck with being able to put this little tripod on the thing, so I'm just going to point you down. Okay. Is that okay? All right, here's my fabric. Right side, wrong side. What do I need? I need this is Heat and Bond Light. I buy this in a roll. Um, they do sell it at Walmart. I buy it on Amazon. Um, this is kind of a, I forget how big this roll is. It usually lasts me a while, but I've been doing a lot more applique, so next time I might buy it. You could buy it by the uh, yard on a bolt too, if you need more. So what I do is I just put my fabric on here and I just cut a piece that is slightly smaller than my fabric. And somebody, I want to, I don't know if she's in here or not, and I don't remember the name of the lady that asked, but she asked about uh, options for scrap material. If you see how I, whenever I cut appliques, you know, I had, this was a fat quarter I had, I will just cut what I need. And then so next time, 
you know, if I need a small piece, I'll just cut it here. So I don't end up having like small separate pieces of scraps. I just have a funky looking bigger piece of material. If that helps you with not having tiny pieces of scrap everywhere. And then I fold it up nicely when I'm done and I put it back in my basket uh, where I could see it. Okay, so I'm gonna put the right side of the fabric down. The, the You can feel the texture of the adhesive on the heat and bond. I put that down and then I use my little mini iron to iron it. It is raining outside now. It's like sideways rain probably. Okay, so it's got a little hot, so I'm just kind of waiting for it to cool off. And then I peel the heat and bond the paper off. So now we have some adhesive here. The reason why we do this is after I, we wash this bib, we don't want this material to separate from the bib and it'll kind of like separate and bubble almost. So I'm going to iron it. Um, usually it goes right through the water soluble topper onto the, the bib. If you're worried that it's not, I can tear away this in, inside part of the topper just in the W so that I know my applique material is adhering nicely to the bib itself. So you see that, how easy that teared away? So now there's no topper here. And now I'm going to, I'm not going to iron it yet. Now we're gonna go do the tack down stitch. So it's gonna stitch that W again. And then we're gonna come back over here, trim it. And then y'all remind me to iron it before we do the satin stitch. Cause that's what I always forget. And that's what y'all are here for to remind me. <laughs> okay, so back to the machine. I'm sorry I have this glare right on the screen. But there's nothing exciting going on there. It's just telling me the next step. So I'm going to slide this back on, hook it to my bracket. So now I'm just making sure that this fabric is covering my W completely. I don't have no little stitches poking out because we want the fabric to fill. Also, another thing to think about when you're doing applique is when you have a patterned fabric, pay attention to how you're cutting your applique piece so that it, the pattern's going to fall how you want in the applique. Or say like, um, look, I was making Elise. I got this frozen material and I was making her a mask. And at first I just cut the, the pieces and then I was like, well, I don't even have a picture of Anna and Elsa in here. So it's kind of the same situation. You wanna pay attention so that if, you know, if I wanted Anna and Elsa to be in my applique, I would make it to where their face would show in the piece. Okay, so that is there. So this is gonna do that same stitch again. And so I'm gonna put my presser foot down and hit start. Now this time though, I'm not gonna let it go back around twice. I'm gonna stop it. And I just kind of hold my fabric while I'm doing this to make sure it, the fabric is kind of pulled taut. I don't keep my fingers close to the needle, but I kind of pull my fabric. But the the heat and bond kind of helped with if it did bubble up or anything in between the stitches. That's what the heat and bond is for. Okay, so now it's doing the rest of the W. Okay, so it was starting to come back. So whenever you're worried about something with your machine or you have to step away or whatever the reason, just hit the green button and the machine will pause. 
So it still wants to keep stitching, but to me, it's it's done. Like I said, I don't like this particular font I have. I need to buy the one from Creative Applique. So I'm just going to hit cut, and this is going to cut my bobbin thread. Because in my um, so if I just tried to pull it off, the bobbin thread would pull with it. So this is going to cut it. So now I can lift my presser foot and take this off. So now we have the W. So we're going to trim it, and then I'm going to iron it because I'm going to remember. Right? Right. Okay. So y'all can see this. All right, I have my favorite applique scissors. They're like tweezers. They are linked down below. So I'm just pulling the fabric and I'm cutting as close to this stitch line as I can without snipping the stitches. If you do snip the stitches, it's not the end of the world with this design because the satin stitch is gonna come over. So the satin stitch is gonna cover up this raw edge of fabric. They have designs where the raw edge of fabric is not covered up and that's where also the heat and bond helps because it keeps the, the fabric from fraying so much on the edges after you wash it. All right, you do need to be careful when you're doing applique that you do not accidentally snip your material underneath. So that's why I always kind of pull the applique fabric up and I make sure my scissors are smoothly gliding above the bib material. quite get as far down in this W as I would want, but I think the satin stitches are going to end up covering up all that area anyway. nice and close I got to those stitches with these scissors like there's just a teeny teeny tiny bit on the outer edge and that's all gonna get covered up with the satin stitch so now you can see where I'm saying the satin stitch this side is gonna hit that water soluble topper and it's gonna leave a nice crisp edge this side of the satin stitch so it goes back and forth like this is still gonna look nice because it, it goes nice on this woven fabric and then it's going to do the name right across. Most of the name will be right on top of the woven fabric. And if I wanted to, before it stitches the name, I could put another piece right here to make sure the name looks crisp. And I'll do that just to be safe. Okay, so now I am ironing. So the water-soluble topper doesn't like the iron, so we need to protect it. So I have a piece of parchment paper. And so all I do is I lay this on top and I iron the W quickly with a little pressure. And this is activating that heat and bond on the back so that it's nice and smooth against the bib material. And now I'm gonna stitch the satin stitch. It's best to do that before you do the satin stitch because there is still a little bit of wiggle room for the material to lay down flat under this single stitch where once you do that satin stitch, there's no wiggle room, then it might leave a, um, like an indention next to the satin stitch if you had a big bubble. All right, now we will go back to the machine. It's gonna do the satin stitch. And while it's doing the satin stitch, I... Okay, reconnecting. Okay, am I reconnected? Okay, is everybody there? Y'all see me? We had a moment of scariness there. <laughs> Power didn't go out, but the phone just kept thinking like something was wrong. Okay, good, y'all see me. Okay, 
All right, so I just, um, okay, I just loaded back the hoop, make sure it's on there. So now it's going to, so previously I paused the machine. So it's still here on this tack down stitch. So I need to jump ahead to, oops, wrong button. Adjust, no, oh, cancel, cancel. Okay, adjust, plus minus, go up a step. Okay, so now it's on the satin stitch of the W. I still have my pink thread loaded, so that's what it's gonna outline it in. And I'm gonna lower my presser foot and hit start. Okay, while that is stitching, I am ready for more questions. <laughs> no new questions, okay. What y'all wanna talk about? Time to sip, that's what it is, time to sip. Okay, so before I had this reconnection error, I saw we had 123 people watching, so I was like, well, I think that's the most we've ever had. So I think we lost a few, but I'm still so happy that all of y'all are here and hanging out and watching. My little, my little helper went away, but if you could give this video a thumbs up, I greatly appreciate it. Okay. Um, could you put the water soluble topper on after trimming up the applique fabric? Yes, you can. If you were worried about the satin stitch on the inside of the applique, you could put another thing of water soluble topper. Um, Brenda, you've been in and out. The grandkids still watching the iPad? <laughs> um, Queen Amani says, I had a sewing full outfit. Any tips? I am not that much of a seamstress. So as far as, as far as sewing an actual shirt, dress, garment, I'm not that helpful. <laughs> I sew masks. I have sewn a, um, a doll dress. It's something I aspire to do, but I am not uh, experienced enough to give advice on it yet. Carol in the group though is um, a really good seamstress. Okay. Um, okay, how can we learn the names of the stitches and the order? Okay, oh wait. Um, so, wait. Okay, let me go back to Ducky um, 1006. How can we learn the name of the stitches and the order? So um, I have an applique tutorial. I have a post on my website, carlybell.com, that shows you how to applique, and I go through the stitches. So it's, it's, it's pretty easy, it's just three of them. When you're doing applique, it's called a placement stitch. It shows you where to put your fabric. A tack down stitch is after you put your fabric, it tacks it down like you saw, and then we trim it. And then the last one is your finishing stitch. This can be a, 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 a range of things. What we're doing today is satin stitch. So if you're talking about the tip, different type of stitches, I plan on writing a post about it. I actually digitized a little design. Let's see if I could find it. Yeah, I digitized something to show you and I, I need to write the blog post, but this is what over it real quick. This is what it looks like. These are the different types of stitches, common stitches for embroidery designs. This is a bean stitch. You can see it's like straight line. It goes back and forth three times for each one. So it's a little bit on the bold side. This is a zigzag stitch. You see how there's a, you know, space in between the zigzags. This is what we did for the witch applique we did last week for uh, sip and stitch. This is a satin. This did not come out good, but what we're doing tonight is satin. So it's, it's very bold and dense, and it goes back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and gives you a nice solid column of stitches. This is a blanket stitch. This is also a kind of finishing stitch for applique. So you see it makes like a T almost, and then it goes and makes another T, and goes and makes another T. That's blanket. So that could be used to fill, um, to finish an applique. And then this is sketch stitch. So you can see it's not filled, it's got some space in between. 
um, and that's called a sketch. And then I don't have one here. A fill stitch is where something is completely filled in with thread and you don't see in the, any of the fabric behind it. So that's a little lesson on stitches. Okay, so let me go back. Carly, can you answer this question? I see that. Do you always use heat and bond on applique or only on certain types of material? I always use heat and bond on the back of my applique material. The only time I don't use it is when we do a project with embroidery where we use a vinyl to fill in the applique instead of a fabric. I don't use heat and bond on the back of the vinyl. Um, and then you also have the option of using like the my glitter stuff at the bottom. This is all heat transfer vinyl on this wall here. The glitter is fun sometimes to fill in the applique um, space. And then uh, you don't need heat and bind because it's already adhesive. It already has it on the back. Okay. Um, what temperature do you keep your iron for the heat and bind? So my little iron, I think I, I have them both kind of on high. My little iron. Yeah, I have it like right below max. See it? Who's here? And then my big iron, I keep it on the silk wool setting. Kind of like a step below lit linen and cotton. Chris is playing doll. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. The order would be in brilliance. Oh, you're talking about the stitches. Yeah. So in Embrilliance, when you buy an applique design, it's automatically in the order you need. And when you open up the design in Embrilliance, it shows you. And they're usually each in a different color. But I messed with mine. And that's why when I first loaded it on my machine, it wasn't right because I messed with it. And I didn't um, realize I had things that were the same color. Yay, I'm back to 126 people. Ooh, we got 129. How y'all doing? Okay. What's the best method to use when embroidering on stretch fabric? I had problems with fabric wanting to pucker. So most of the time with stretch fabric, your issue is stabilizer. So tonight is a little different because this is a knit fabric on the front, but the terry cloth on the back helps stabilize it a little better. And then I used a tear away. On normal stretchy t-shirt, cotton onesies, toddler t-shirts, you need to use a cutaway. Um, for the cutaway I like to use is a poly mesh cutaway. It um, it looks like this. So a normal cutaway is kind of thick um, and stiffer. A poly mesh cutaway is thinner and more see-through. This is great for um, white shirts where you don't a lot of times when you do a white shirt, you can see the stabilizer around the design when you're done and the kid is wearing it. Poly mesh, you won't see. So, and also I get iron on poly mesh. When you iron on this on the back of a shirt, it helps the knit from shifting. Then because this is a little thinner, depending on the thickness of the shirt you're using, um, I combine this where I, I'll iron this on the back of the shirt behind where you're going to put your design and then I will iron the same tear away we used tonight. I'll iron that on top of it and then when I'm done with the design I'll tear away the tear away so the only thing that's left on the shirt is this and I have some videos on how to hoop a toddler shirt or a kid's shirt and it shows you my whole process of how I stabilize and then I have a video on how to embroider a onesie and I do the same thing, except the, the onesie I was using was really thin. So I used the poly mesh, and then I did two layers of tear away on top. Okay. Let's go back. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Angela has two questions. Okay. What is the best method to use when embroidering on stretch fabric? Oh, that's what we just went over. Should I use more stable wires? Yes. Okay. So I think I answered that. Um, what is the best method? expensive digitizing software. I use um, Embrilliance Stitch Artist. Now, digitizing software can get very expensive, like thousands, okay? Oh, the satin stitch just finished. Thousands for digitizing software. And yes, the the very expensive ones, they have a lot of features. Um, it's, it's definitely a learning curve though. So for me, I was a little too nervous to get into all of that. 
Um, also, a lot of these digitizing softwares only work on a PC, and I have a Mac. And Brilliance works on Mac and PC. They offer a digitizing software that comes in three levels called Stitch Artist. So if you are just starting out and you want to play with digitizing, you can get Stitch Artist level one for I think $169, if I'm not mistaken, which is dirt cheap. Um, I went ahead and got Stitch Artist level two. I think it came out to 300 and 60 or 380 I don't remember how much buying one and two together cost and then stitch artist level three I think if you buy all three levels your total cost is 650 but you can buy one level at a time so buy level one learn how to use it if you find you need more features you could look at what's offered in level two and say okay that's worth paying another hundred and seventy dollars and buy it and then like I'm on level two right now and I'm learning to use it and then I'm seeing there are features in level three that I think I'm ready to start using and I'm gonna upgrade to level three and I'll pay another 160 or $70, whatever it is, so you could break it up. Um, if you click on the link below in the description box that says click here to learn more about the Brilliant software, if you go to that, I tell you about Stitch Artist and there's a link to Stitch Artist in that blog post. Okay. Do I pre-wash my poly mesh? I've heard of talk of that lately. I have never pre-washed my poly mesh. I've also heard people talk about it. Hi. <laughs> um, so I've heard people talk about pre-washing poly mesh. I have never done it. Um, I've had, I have had a few cases where I've made something for Elise and I washed it and it did get wrinkly underneath. I don't know if that was issues with the fabric that I, the dress that I embroidered or the poly mesh, but it, does, it doesn't happen all the time. It was just that one time. So I don't know if I should do it and it would help me, but it's not something I've done before. Um, do you recommend any certain kind of fabric cutter? Um, so are you talking about uh, electronic cutting machine um, or scissors? So I have an electronic cutting machine, the Silhouette Cameo 4. Um, and I do use that to cut fabric sometimes for applique. And I use it to cut all my fabric for my mask patterns. Um, and it's, it's great. It comes with a rotary blade. Um, and I have a video on how I cut applique fabric with my Silhouette on my YouTube channel. You can go and look under videos and you'll see all my videos and see it there. Um, can you use regular HTV or does it have to be special vinyl? If you want to fill an applique with HTV, you can use regular HTV. The only thing you do first is you peel off that clear carrier sheet. And so then you just have, I mainly only do applique with glitter HTV. I've never done it with smooth HTV. I don't know if it would come out good with smooth. But with glitter, just peel off that um, clear carrier sheet. You know, cut you a square piece that's going to fit your applique. Um, and then stitch it and then I have been able I've had good luck with not even having to trim the HTV when I'm done I could pull it away like tear away but be careful you know if you if you get nervous about it then go ahead and cut it like you would your applique and then put a quick iron on it and it will adhere to your shirt um, Queen oh wait I did something Queen said all of her recommendations um, she has all of my recommendations in my units. Yeah, so if you're in my Facebook group, the link to the Facebook group is down below. When you go to the main page of the Facebook group at the top, you see like about discussion units. Click units. Look at everything in there. A lot of links to every all my supplies I use. I also have a blog post on my website, carlybell.com. It's all about the supplies, and you can see everything I use there. And I have a lot of things linked in the description box below as well. Okay, can you use regular HTV but peer off the clear transfer street? Yes. Um, like I said, I've not used the plain smooth Mommy, HTV. I've I only used the glitter. I love treasure maps in my, in my hand. I love treasure maps. Ooh. Do, do they have a good treasure? Mom, look. Oh. So, Mom, mm -hmm. you start right here, go you want to the show way right here, and you'll find treasure, and then... Do you want me to show all my friends? Go all the way right here and go all the way over here and you'll find treasure. Okay. 
and go right here. And, and that's, that's where that's you'll it. find treasure. Awesome. Can I show my friend? Yeah. Okay. Don't tell anybody, guys. This is the treasure map. Okay, it's a secret. Just with us and our, yeah, our cool friends. Daddy and Abby knows, too. Daddy and Abby knows, too? Okay. I keep it a little tiny secret. A little tiny secret. Okay. All right, Mommy's answering questions. Um, are we talking about my scissors? Yes, my little tweezers, scissors. All right. Phyllis, I have not heard her talk about pre-washing, so great question. Yeah, we talked about that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Where do I find the free version of Embrilliance? Mm -hmm. I went there and saw a $150 version, but not the free version. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there are two free versions of Embrilliance. Mommy, is While this we're my talking, cheetah mask? I'm going to go ahead and load Mom, the next. Is this my yeah, cheetah that's mask? your cheetah mask. I love cheetah! <laughs> not... Cheetahs are my favorite. Cheetahs are a favorite. I'm not done making it, though. So leave it right here. Fast. Look, I made you an Anna. This is an Anna and Elsa one, too. Oh, I love it. I love my Anna and Elsa. I'm not finished making it, though. Okay, put it back up here because i got to finish sewing them. Oh, Mom, grab Mask. the baby shirt. Solve the new rage. What, baby? Grab the baby shirt. I, I, haven't, I, I haven't been able to make the baby shirt yet. Can, can you wait until tomorrow? <laughs> okay, really quickly no, before I continue the with questions. Use. I'll show you the baby shirt, but I can't. I can't put a pretty picture on it yet. Okay. Right. How about you could put Waymo and spell her name? This would be a fun project to do for a sip and stitch. I think this is. I can't remember if this is blank boutiques or ARB. They sell. Is that my shirt? Yeah, this is the baby shirt. They sell American Girl doll or 18 inch doll size Mom. shirts. So, hold, I'll tell hold you on how to spell her name. Okay, hold on one second. So I can make I could I have the same pink ruffled shirt to fit Elise, and then I can make her doll, and it it uh they're easy to embroider on this machine because the back is Velcro, and so you could float it just like we did the bib on a four by four hoop, and make her doll have a matching shirt as her. So maybe we'll do that for another sip and stitch. Okay, so you can go put that on her doll. How do you how do you spell your doll's name? Uh, her name's Swissalia, and it goes like. And what does Swissalia? What is her, what is her name? Wasalia. Wasalia, with a W. Yeah. So it's W A N E. Okay. <laughs> That's how you spell her name. That's how you, girl. Y'all heard it first here. Okay. My baby doll's name is Wasalia. I love it. Okay. All right. Go put. Go see if it fits her, and then we'll make. We'll put a pretty design or her name on it another day. Oh, she likes butterflies. Okay. We, and I got, rainbows. I got butterflies and rainbows. We could put on there. <laughs> and Frozen. Okay. That's her favorite movie. Oh, got it. Okay. And her favorite Halloween movie. And her favorite Halloween movie is Hocus Pocus. That is my favorite Halloween movie too. Really quickly, I wanted to show y'all changing threads on the machine. I see a lot of people do this, and I'm here to tell you don't. Do not pull the thread out backwards. So you lift your presser foot. I cut the thread right here where it starts to enter the thread path. I cut it, and I pull it out so that you're not pulling the thread backwards through the thread path. Okay? And then I have my thread stand. So now I can wrap my thread back up. I'm done with the pink. And now we'll do the name in purple. Run it back through. But um, yeah, I just wanted to give that little tidbit in case. Because I used to pull it backwards. And I brought my machine to get serviced. And there was a lot of dust and debris from pulling the thread backwards and the man at the sewing machine shop fussed at me and said do not do that pull it this way cut it and pull it okay so now my name is last oh we said just to be safe I'm gonna go ahead and just lay a piece of water soluble topper here I'm not gonna pin it or anything I'm just gonna lay it I'm gonna put my top down and now it's gonna stitch her name
And this time it's spelled correctly. <laughs> Thank God for time. Thank God. Okay. Let me scroll back up now. All right. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Okay, we were talking about in brilliance. Let me get back to that. Free version of in brilliance. Did you okay. know my baby? Did you know my baby doll has pink has pink pants too? It does? Yeah. No way, Jose. Yes, she does. Okay. Alright, so there are two free versions of Embrilliance. One is only for Fox. It's called Embrilliance Express, and I have it linked down below. Embrilliance Express. That strictly only works with the BX format fonts. So if you go lots of like reputable places that you buy fonts from, like Creative Applique, Alphalicious, Stitchtopia, um, Applique Corner, Itch to Stitch, all my favorite places. When you buy a font from them, it comes in multiple formats, just like every other design, but it, they also include BX. So what you would do is you download in Brilliance Express, and you take your BX font and I just drag and drop it into the Embrilliance window and it automatically installs it. I think also if you just double click it, it also it automatically installs it. Um, and you'll get a BX format for each size. So say if you buy a font, it usually comes in 0.75 inch, 1 inch, 1.5 inch, 2 inch. So it will come in each size. And so when you go in to pick your, your font, you pick what size you want it to be in. Like tonight, this is 1.25 inch tall letters. Um, so and Brilliance Express only works with BX fonts. You can't open up anything else in it. It won't open up a PDF file, won't open up anything else. Only let you install BX, type out a name or a lettering design, and save it as whatever format you want, okay? Then the in Brilliance demo version, which is a whole different thing you download, will let you do any, when, when you open it, it tells you, okay, do you want to use Essentials, Enthusiast, Stitch Artist Level 1, 2, 3? Like you can check mark all the programs you want to act like you're using, and it will show you all the features to those programs, but it will not let you save anything you design. So, um, wait, Charles, does it get late? We're at, a, we're at an hour and a half, we're not too bad. <laughs> Um, so that's the difference. Express, only BX fonts, will let you save things. Demo, will let you play with any of the features of any of the programs, won't let you save anything. But the demo version is really cool because like I played with it a lot before I bought Stitch Artist so that I was familiar with it once I actually paid for Stitch Artist, Artist and bought it. I kind of was familiar with the program already because I got to play with it a lot and make sure it was something I thought I was going to be able to use. Okay? All right. Ooh, all right. I'm going through questions now. Um, oh, Peggy. I'm glad you found us too. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Sorry if I glitched out there. I was getting the phone call again. Okay. Um, yay. 135 watching and 70 thumbs up. Yay. Oh, Cindy said her secret is safe. Okay. Cindy, what about embroidery on a towel? What kind of stabilizer for that? Okay, we've done a towel. We haven't done a towel on YouTube, but we've done one in Facebook. All my towels I do, the same process we did tonight, just hoop the tear away, float the towel, pin the water-soluble topper on top. Same process. What, baby? Oh, uh, Queen had to go. Good night, Queen. You lost the baby shirt? Okay, I'm gonna Okay, I'm gonna come help you find it when I'm done, okay? Don't worry. We'll find it. It's in the playroom. I can't go right now, baby. I'm making something. Okay. So I think I've caught up on all the questions. Carol, did I miss any from earlier? We are almost done stitching. It's looking good. All right, let me go to Facebook real quick. Um, oh, Brenda said the kids just left. Okay, let's go back. Okay, 
Okay, Cynthia, I saw you wrote something, but it's, I can't see it on my computer for some reason. I see it on my phone. Do you still need the tea? I don't, re repeat your question for me, please. Okay, what font is Westland? Westland is a font from So Fancy. It is their exclusive font that they had digitized and turned into a Broadway font. I have the link down for June, like in May and June, and I did some embroidery tutorials for them. So if you go to SoFancy.com and go to blog and tutorials, you'll see the few embroidery tutorials I did with them. They have a whole embroidery section with tons of different fonts and designs, and every once in a while, they'll do a bundle. So you can buy a set of 20 or 30 design, you know, designs and fonts and appliques for like, I think the last time they did it was only like $17. So keep an eye out when they do a bundle again, I will let y'all know. But for right now, you can buy the individual font and it's linked down below and on their website. Um, let me refresh my computer screen because I'm not seeing anything. Um, how long do you get to play with it before you buy it? So for Embrilliance, it's unlimited. There's no date on it. So like most other, um, most other software, they'll give you like a one month free trial. So you have a month to play with it and then you might actually be able to save things with it. But once that month is done, you don't get to play with it no more. And Brilliance kind of took a different approach to where the free trial never expires, but you can't save anything with it. I kind of like it that way because then for me, like, okay, the first time I downloaded it was to see what Essentials was about. And then once I was like, okay, I like this, I would use it, and I bought it. And then years later, I'm like, I think I want to learn about Stitch Artists. Same, I could just open up the demo version, play with Stitch Artists, and be like, okay, I think I would use this, I'm going to buy it. Um, and it, I didn't have a time frame I had to, you know, look at it at. Okay, do I still need to put the soft? Cynthia, I'm guessing you're asking about the tender touch on the back of the bib. I don't think I need it. If you think about a bib, most of the time, a kid is wearing a shirt under the bib. Sometimes we have naked babies and they just wear bibs. <laughs> but most of the time, there is a shirt in between the skin and this. Um, I could ask the mom if you're worried about it. You can put some tender touch on the back here. I don't know how well it would adhere since the back of the bib is terry cloth, but we we could try it out. So it's all done. So now we just need to go clean it up. Okay. Um, what's the easiest way to offer monogram designs for a local business if you're not the digital artist and monograms will vary? I was quoted ten dollars for one, but that wouldn't leave any room for profit. So to monogram things for people, typically if somebody brings me something to monogram, I would charge around $10 depending, you know, if it's business and X for monogram, I'd say the going rate is 12-ish, maybe, um, $12. But that's just for you, your machine, your thread, your stabilizer. That's not the product. So if I was selling this bib, I think I would sell it for, I think at least 15. I think the bib cost maybe $3. Um, and then it would be 12, you know, me essentially charging $12 for the, for the thing, but it depends. You have to look at your area. I usually go on Etsy to get a, an idea of the going rate for things. I know it varies greatly. A lot of people underprice their work. Um, but it just depends on your area and what people are willing to pay. But don't don't cut yourself short. Don't don't underprice yourself. If somebody really wants something, they'll pay for it because they're not going to pay eight hundred dollars for a machine to do it themselves. Obviously, you know they can pay more than five dollars to have something done. Carol is Carol's. Don't get Carol started on pricing. <laughs> I'm waiting for her to uh, to chime in. <laughs> Okay, thank you so much. Awesome instructions. I need to watch this again a few times. Oh, thank you, Peggy. That's the cool thing about YouTube. So once we do this, it's on YouTube and it's on there forever. So you can always come back and reference um, anything on here. Would you charge a hooping fee and, and per 1,000 stitches? Again, this is another pricing option. In, 
I need to put it in the unit section. In the group, somebody posted an awesome like article from someone else talking about pricing and there was like they really broke it down for you I'll have to find it and I will post it in the units group of the group so it's easy for everybody to find Carol says she's trying to behave um yes it broke it down a call you know a minimum of ten dollars no matter if it was tenth you know tenth as if essentially it's a dollar per thousand stitches it was still ten dollars starting um, even if it was below 10,000 stitches and then if it was over 10,000 stitches it's a dollar for every thousand stitches I'll find it and I'll post it in the units group because I'm not going to remember everything but it, it really broke it down nicely um, and then you know taking in the item and then maybe adding something to it because I mean you got to also take into account the tax I paid for this the shipping I paid for this sometimes when I order Blanks Boutique the shipping costs just as much as buying you know another outfit um, the shipping starts at like eight dollars so Usually when I buy from them, I don't just buy two, you know, one or two things. I buy a whole slew of things because I want to get my money's worth for the shipping. All right. Cynthia asked, um, do we need to put protective back of the mesh for a baby onesie? Yes. I always put what they call tender touch, the mesh fusible interfacing when I'm done on the back of the design so that these threads are not uh, rubbing against the baby skin. Um, <laughs> Wendy said, Carol, please don't behave. <laughs> we like it when you don't behave. <laughs> we do great work, but often miss the mark on paying ourselves and end up losing money without realizing. Okay, she's off her soapbox. Totally agree. I mean, you have to sit down and think about it. How much money have we invested in these machines, in our materials, in our software, in our, you know, thread stabilizer, the time, the amount of things we messed up before we got it right to where we could actually sell things <laughs> and then go and charge $5 for you spending an hour doing something. No, don't pay yourself $5 for an hour or so box two. Um, okay, Con and Terry, I'm ready for that brownie. Where's the brownie? I love Elise's baby name. Yes. Okay, do I use organic cotton? I have no idea. I bought this rainbow material is from, you can buy this online. It is from allstitchedupbyangela.com. Um, she is a local fabric store here in the New Orleans area. She has a location in Metairie and a location in Slidell. If you're from around here, you know those, those areas. Um, but she has a website and you could order online. I got this fat quarter at her store because I knew Elise would love it. And it's so adorable. I don't think it's organic cotton, though. I think it's just woven cotton. But it might specify on her website if she does have any organic cotton. <sighs> Ocon said we need to have a get-together in the mountains. And have brownies. <laughs> and painkillers. All right, Cute Cupcake says she's thinking of opening the Etsy shop and doesn't know where to start. I personally have, I don't have an Etsy shop. Um, I would say my advice to you would be do some research about Etsy and opening a successful Etsy business. Um, I have heard that you should not open a shop unless you have a minimum of around 20 to 30 items ready to post. Don't open a shop and have two things in it. Wait to open your shop until you have 20 or 30 quality photos of your work before you open it. It's also very important how you word your description of your items, you know, to have really key on having a successful Etsy business. Um, but my number one thing I recommend to people when they start with embroidery and they're like, I think I wanna sell things. So tonight when I'm done, I'm going to take a good picture of this. Everything I make, if it's for a gift or um, or something that I, you know, I made to sell someone, I take a picture of it. Build yourself up a nice portfolio. And so when you get to a point where you've made a bunch of things, because like right now, I don't, I don't show people pictures and say, pick what you want. They usually show me a picture and say, this is kind of what I want. Can you make something like it? And then I make something like it. 
and I take a picture of it. So I'm building up my portfolio. So if I ever were to open an Etsy shop, I have a whole slew of pictures on my phone to where I could open a shop with at least 30 items right away. Um, okay, Miss Social Deb X, if I'm professional and have a business or a hobbyist. I am a hobbyist. I don't have a full on business. I don't have an Etsy shop. Um, actually, the most business I have is, is doing this and having tutorials and having a website. My business is I want to sell digitized embroidery designs um, and, and do more of teaching work than selling work. Um, I did for several years sell a lot of the work I made. Everything I sold was through Facebook um, and through friends, family, acquaintances of friends and family. Um, and then I did get to a point where I was shipping to people outside of my area, um, but it was all through Facebook. I never had an official website or Etsy shop. So I think of myself more of as a hobbyist. Um, Mitch said, just got the PE 800 this week. Yay, congrats on your new machine. I will need it, SIP and credit card, yes. <laughs> Don't get me started. I'm. Y'all know this, I'm very easily talked into buying things. Okay. Carly, I'll bring the, yes, I'll bring the painkiller powder. Here's my powder. Painkiller, where am I? Powder, nutmeg. Ooh, I hear the wind and the rain hitting my window. Um, oh, thank you, um, Carol, for pointing out. So Mitch, if you haven't opened up your PE 800 yet, I do have an unboxing video that shows you how to set it all up and get it started. Um, just started. Kelly says she just started with her PE 800. Bobbin thread is not catching when I change colors. What could this be? Um, most of the time when you have an issues with bobbin thread, it's not loaded right. So let me quickly show you because I say this in the group all the time, but I need a video showing people. So I'll make one eventually. So can you see the bobbin? Okay, so the bobbin case. I, first off, highly recommend pre-wound bobbins. I have a link for them down below. This is a pre-wound bobbin. Okay, when I used to wind my own bobbins, I would every once in a while have a case where the bobbin didn't wind properly, and this was not a nice, smooth surface. It was bumpy, it was had more, it was more dense on this side of the bobbin than this side of the bobbin. Lots of issues can happen. Pre-wound bobbins are my, my favorite thing now, so I don't have to worry about that. When you are loading the bobbin, make sure it is going in the counterclockwise direction. Um, you want your string to be hanging down on the, what is this, left-hand side, so it kind of looks like a P, right? So you're going to drop it in, holding that. Okay, so I have my thread poking out here. Okay, and now instead of just stopping right here and cutting it, it's important to pull. I, I use 12 inches as a random number, but I'll pull. And then I cut. That is gonna help this tension be right. If you just pull it as it, the little piece there and cut it right away, the tension's not quite right. Pulling it helps with the tension. Hopefully that will help your problem because most of the time when people are having tension issues, it is that simple thing right there without pulling the bobbin thread through. So I hope that helps. I will try to make a better lit and everything video and put that in the unit section of the Facebook group. Um, Carly, look above. Kelly needs help. I think that's what I just did. Okay. Um, Uh, how do you put a watermark? Linda wants. They have lots of apps on your phones to put watermarks. When I w first started, I actually put my business card on the like the corner of the shirt when I took the picture. Um, but that was years years ago. So now they have nice um, apps on your phone to put a watermark. I think also the Canva C A N V A dot com. 
um, is an online program to make all kinds of stuff. I use it to make some of my images and graphics, um, but they have a watermark feature, I think, on there you can use too. Uh, a great picture shows the design and quality of work. Excellent. Yeah, I, I mean, go on Etsy, look at, you know, search embroidery, find something that stands out to you. Go look at their shop. That's going to show you what you need to do. Look how many sales they have. Look how long they've been on Etsy. Those kinds of things are going to get your gears moving to see like, oh, this is what I need to do. It's, I mean, and it's not just, you know, you take a high quality photo, needs to be well lit, shirt needs to be folded just right, having pretty ribbon and beads and, and little props around the shirt, matching the theme of the shirt. Lots of things like that make a huge difference to a customer. Because I mean, go on there as a customer and go look and see what stands out to you. And that's going to show you. And then find something that's going to set you apart from that. You know, find find your little piece that is going to make you stand out compared to the one that stood out to you. So all of those things make a real big difference on Etsy. And Etsy is essentially a search engine. So key phrases and terms on your title of your item make a real big difference. Okay. Karen says she charges a minimum of $15. Yeah, I've heard, you know, people like, I am not turning on my machine for less than $10, less than $15. Don't even ask me to turn my machine on for that <laughs> the least amount of money. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, who bought all the ruffled baby bids? They're sold out. Wendy, I know. So, uh, Blank's Boutique has a lot. They, they sell out of things a lot. Um, ARB Blank's is another Blanks website that has very similar items, same great quality um, as Blanks Boutique. Also, Laughing Giraffe makes a nice ruffle bib, and I think they sell them on Amazon. If I find a link, I'll add it to the box below. Um, uh, thank you, Jill. Okay, Carly lost signal, so you're gonna have to say goodnight. I just love this group and the creative people. I'm gonna go dream about Brad. Good night, Mom, Connie. Mom, <laughs> you honey. will play the Peppa Pig game. Uh, on my iPad? Yeah. Okay, we'll get my iPad. Go get it. Could you put it All right, on? good night, Carol. Okay, Connie says I missed it, but we'll watch later. Hi, Mom. Here okay, wait, Mama. let me set Elise up. Yeah, I think we're about done. We have to, we need to go clean up the bib, and then we'll be done. Um, Peppa Pig. Game. I don't think it's on the iPad, baby. I think it's on, no, here it is. There we go. Hey. Yay. Okay. Um, people don't realize the cost of these machines and supplies. No, they don't. They don't. And for a lot of people that do vinyl work, and then like I think I want to get into embroidery, they don't real. It, it's a it's a big step up from vinyl, because I mean my my vinyl machine costs three hundred ish dollars, and then to buy all the vinyl I got them all. <laughs> I mean that was an investment, but I mean you're looking at double at least for the embroidery machine. And the way things are now since the pandemic, the price of all these, the machines are hard to find and the price has gone up, at least on this type of machine, like the PE 800. Um, how do you go about picking a name for your business without it being picked by someone else? Hmm. I would brainstorm a list of ideas of names and then I would go search Etsy to see if someone has that name already. Um, I think also when you go into Etsy and you go to choose a shop name, you know, it will tell you if, oh, the shop name you chose has already been taken. But I would just brainstorm, write a whole list of things that you think are cute and stand out and are personal to you. Um, like mine was K and D designs because K for Carly and D was for Delana, my aunt. And we were, she, she's the one that got me into this. She bought the embroidery machine first and then I played with hers and then I bought one. Um, then when I started thinking about opening an Etsy shop, I think mine was like Carly's creations, like just play and wordplay, but because my name is spelled differently, I might be able to find an Etsy shop with that, but just find something cute. And then a lot of people here in the New Orleans area use NOLA, N-O-L-A, in their shop titles. Um, like they have a really good Etsy shop for you to check out that, um, has beautiful work, beautiful pictures, is, um... Oh, what is it? 
Nola stitched or stitch stitched Nola. Look at her Etsy shop. She has beautiful work, beautiful pictures. Um, that gives you an idea of what I'm talking about with the things that stand out. Um, all right, Brenda's done. Your bed is calling. I hope, I hope you sleep good, Brenda. I know you've been having trouble sleeping. All right, Linda says, do you need to register at the courthouse? Not that I know of. I've registered Carly Bell with the state of Louisiana, but to be honest, I don't know. Like you, uh, you could just be a sole, sole proprietor is what they call it. So you don't have to have, it depends on your state. I think every state is different on whether or not you have to have a business license. So just do some Google searches with your state and opening a business and see if you can find an article that will give you a run through of what you need to open an online business in your state. Okay, back to business. Sorry if I stop with questions for a minute. Okay, so we have our bib, we have our name, and so my machine does not cut jump stitches. So there is a stitch here between the W and the E. I'm gonna cut, and there's one here. So even though most of it's connected, they had those couple jump stitches. So I just cut those with my little scissors and then I am gonna pull away my water soluble topper, just like a tear away stabilizer. It should all come out nicely. With satin stitches, usually everything comes out super nice with pulling away like a tear away. All right, I'm gonna remove my pins. And now I'm going to pull away the other layer of water soluble topper. Okay, there's still a little bit in this S here and I'm going to spray with my little water bottle I got from the travel section and I'm spraying my placement marks too, but I'm going to get those off with a Tide pen. But I'm just spraying. I can also see my placement marks through my applique fabric just wetting that and that's going to go away when it's washed too but I'm just going to wet it because I don't want it to be there when I give this as a gift and that's going to go away my trick oh wait so that little bit of topper that's there I'm going to wipe it away with this old dish rag I have and I can wipe in there but this is going to get any of that residual topper off okay and now my trick to get in the placement marks off the water helps, but it really has to be soaking wet for it to come off. Um, I use a Tide pen and that gets it off completely. And I can even put the Tide pen through the applique fabric and erase that placement mark that I can see underneath it. probably use a little a waste kind of my Tide pen when I do that but it needs to be done this would also because this pen is also air disappearing um, this will probably be gone by the morning anyway if I would give it to her tomorrow okay so that is done now and I did that before I tore it away but you could so now we're just tearing away so I'm just pulling it off Okay, so now the bib is off of the tearaway. This is what the back looks like. You have a couple long stitches from where it finished the satin stitch. I'm gonna trim those just a smidge. They're still sticking out like a quarter inch. I don't wanna cut them all the way to the, um, the back because I'm always worried that's gonna compromise the front stitches that they might come out. It's supposed to tie off on those areas but I get a little nervous about cutting too close so I, I still leave a little bit of those things and then if I wanted to I could tear away the stabilizer in the W filling in the W so that the terry cloth is shown through I'm not gonna worry about getting all in between some of these small places of the letters but I'm gonna get the bulk of it Okay. 
And because I had spray adhesive on this stabilizer, it might be a little hard to get off. And just, just watch because with terry cloth, sometimes it's hard and you start pulling the loops of the terry cloth loose and you don't want to do that. I use my nails. Since I do have long nails, it's kind of easy for me. You can also try tweezers if you don't have long nails. But now you see, you know, I'm not going to worry about inside the Y. I'm not going to worry about in the S. But everywhere else is, is out. So now you just see the, the, the terry cloth on the back. Um, if you were worried about, this doesn't feel bad at all. It doesn't feel super rough. No, no different than the texture of the terry cloth. So I don't think this is any issue for a baby. If you were worried, you could try ironing on the um, Tender Touch. Just cut a piece a little bit bigger than your design and iron it. I don't know how well it would iron to terry cloth though. I don't know if it would stay. So that is it. We are done with our bib. Isn't it cute? This is cute for a baby because this is baby stuff is usually all like real pastel -y. I like that this, Mom, one, maybe this one's you should bright. Buy a rattle for the baby. Maybe I should buy a rattle for the baby? Yeah. That's a good idea. Okay, so everybody like it? I think Elise did good choosing the rainbows as the option. But I think the diamonds would also have been beautiful. I love mint. A lot of people like pink and mint together. So this is for Westlin. Thank God for Khan at the beginning of the live told me I was spelling it wrong and now it is spelled correctly. <laughs> and the sad part was, is I went and checked the mom's Facebook page when I was in in brilliance, making the design. Okay, let me make sure. Let me, okay. Ooh, Kathy Colbert said, copyright your name once you're sure it's available. A poor man's patent is to write it in letter form and date it and mail it to yourself till you decide what you must do. Okay. Um, thanks, I want to make Christmas stockings bigger than you buy because you can't put anything in them. Yes. Oh, Sandy said the power surged. I hope you're okay. Um, thank you, Bye Bye. Thank y'all all very much. Okay, so I think I've gone over my limit where I always tell my husband, I'm like, oh, I'm only gonna be on YouTube for like an hour tonight, you know? Well, I'll, I'll get done early so we can go lay down and watch a movie. No, <laughs> every Friday night, I'm like taking 10, 10 times longer than I tell him I'm gonna take. <laughs> so. I hope everybody enjoyed tonight's tutorial. I'm so thankful for y'all watching. Um, I'm, I, I've been blown away by the amount of new subscribers we've been having and the new members of our Facebook group. Every week we're having tons of new people join. So I just wanted to say thank you so much. I appreciate you guys. I'm so glad that this is helpful for y'all because I was telling, oh, I need to give a shout out to Lee. She go, her first name is Cynthia, but she goes by Lee, and she's in our group, and I don't know if she's watching tonight, but she is my first persona student, you know, trying to be a teacher. <laughs> so I have a special deal that if you purchase the persona, my new big baby here, um, if you buy this machine through me using my affiliate link for Sewing Machines Plus, um, I will give you free virtual one-on-one -on -one training on how to use it. So Lee is my first uh, persona student. And so we had our training this week and, um, and it was really fun to talk with her and, and teach her how to use the machine. And I have, I was going somewhere with this and I already forgot. I had a reason for saying that. I lost it. It's late. I need to take another drink. <laughs> Mm. Yes, and Sierra, um, who is watching YouTube right now, number two right here, um, she plans on buying the persona tomorrow, so she will be my number two student. I had a reason why I was saying that, and I lost it. Let me read what I was saying. Oh, I lost it. It was something me and Lee were talking about. 
that made me think about it, and that's why I said that. I lost it, guys. I'm late. <laughs> it's late. Oh, Peggy, you're sold. <laughs> um, Linda, how much is it? So it's not cheap. It was a big step for me, and and I have a lot of people contact me about it, and they're like, I got it. It took me seven years to talk my husband into letting me buy this. It was five thousand dollars, which is by no means a small amount of money, but for me, I wanted an upgrade. Really wanted a multi needle machine, but multi needle machines from Brother are double the price of this one, and. It does all the same things. It has the same great features that this machine has with using the easy frames and having the free arm. So it's a lot easier to hoop things. Um, but it doesn't have six needles and have six. So I said, I have to change the thread because it's only one, one needle. But I said for $5,000 more, I'll change the thread. That's no problem. <laughs> So, um, so that's how much it costs. It is, it is expensive, but I do have a code to save you $250 off of it. And then I have the virtual free training. So that's my offer to you. If you are interested in the persona, feel free to message me on Facebook, or you can email me at carlybellblog at gmail.com. Okay. And I have a link to the persona down below in the description box so you can go to Sewing Machines Plus and check it out and see um, how nice it is. And it comes with a free stand too. The stand, the stand that I have. Um, hi, Anna. Uh, thank you so much. I'm glad you're watching and you're enjoying it. Um, yeah, Linda said no, not cheap. Her shed was 3000 Right, right. It was when, when, when my friends and family when I tell them I got a new machine they're like oh yeah that's great you know and how much was it they're like what <laughs> you paid that much for what <laughs> like yeah so I'm not charging uh less than $15 when you ask me to embroider something <laughs> so but it's it's a passion of mine I love it um and I've had this machine for seven years and I've loved it and it does great but the new machine does so much more and it's so easier, so much easier. And, um, and the, the different things I can do with it that I couldn't with this one. It, it, to me, it's, it's a big difference. And I told my husband, I'll start making things again to make money to pay for it. <laughs> so um, you have to look at it as an in investment, even if you're, a, you know, if, if you're a hobbyist or you want to start a business. Most people that buy this kind of machine do kind of have intentions of starting a business, but it just, it just depends. Um, when you research machines, did you find Brother to be better? I saw a Janome 7 needle that I don't think was 10000 No, Janome one is cheaper. Plus, has that. I was researching and deciding I almost went with the Janome 4 needle. It was the same price as my 1 needle. The things that turned me off with Janome was, um, I've heard the interface is not as intuitive or easy to use as brother, like the screens and, and using the onboard navigation to, if you need to rotate your design, move your design, jump ahead steps, you know, go behind steps, move stitches, all those kinds of things. The brother interface is super straightforward and very user friendly. I heard Janome's is not as much. Um, also, another big thing for me is that my persona can do hats, what they call a structured hat. So it fits on this special driver. So this gets on the machine and, it, and then you could put the curved hat on here and fit it on here. Oops, sorry, my power's, my battery's going dead on my phone. Okay, so um, with this machine, I can do real baseball hats um, that the kind of like my husband likes. Um, with unstructured hats, like we, I've done a video on before and Carol in the group and on the chat right now, she makes this special device that can fit in your five by seven hoop for this PE 800 machine. So you could do a soft hat, but I wanted to do the structure. The Janome can't do that. The brother can, um, was one of the reasons that, and then 
to be honest, I'm a, I'm a brother girl. I have a brother serger, a brother sewing, a small brother embroidery. I just, I wanted to stick with brother. That's, that was my personal preference. I've had good luck with the machines. Um, they have a good reputation. I have um, sewing machine stores in the area that can service them if I would ever need it. Um, so that was all my reasons on why I went with the brother. Um, yes, the hat tube. I haven't played with it yet though. I need to learn how to use it. Um, Miss Social Deb, I make a lot of Christmas presents, birthday presents, and it pays for itself, I think, yes. Um, I've also had a Janome, no problems with software. Um, brother, Baby Lock, Janome are all good, I think, yeah. How much she sells the hat hoop for? Miss uh, Carol sells her hat hoop for $38. Let me, I'll give you a link to it. So be, pay attention to the, um, let me see, I gotta find the link to it. It's in the unit section of the group. I think I have it in the supply list. Um, pay attention because she has different hat hoop, it's called a brim board, that's what the name of it is. Um, she has different ones for different machines. Okay, here's the brim board link. So when you go to this link, it will say, choose your machine. So if you have the PE 800, PE 770, um, uh, you would pick that one. If you have the Brother NQ 1600E or a, the larger six by 10 machines, you could check her list and make sure your machine is on that list and then you would get that brim board. She's also made a Janome uh, 400E, 500E brim board and she is working on, okay, so Cindy, you have the NQ3500D. That is the same machine, same hoop as the 1600E, E. Um, so you would pick that brim board and your, your machine should be on the list because that's the same machine as um, Brenda. So yeah, y'all can go to Carol's website um, and choose the brim board that works for your machine. All right, I was gonna get the Brother 1400, but they discontinued continued it and I learned all I could and now I can't get it. The Brother 1400 is just an older version of the Brother 1600, the NQ 1600E. I have a link for it down below. Sewing Machines Plus sometimes have it. I don't think it's in stock right now. The the main the nice thing though between the 1400 and the 1600 is the 1600 cuts jump stitches. Same machine essentially. It's just upgraded. Still has a six by ten hoop, but it cuts jump stitches. Also, Baby Lock has a machine that's essentially the same thing. It's called the Baby Lock Flourish Two. I want to say Sewing Machines Plus has that in stock right now. I think I have a link for that too. Um, let me find the link for the, I think the, the last time I looked, the Flourish 2 was in stock. So again, that is, is the same machine as the 1600 that has a six by 10 hoop. That is like a nice, if you have a four by four machine or the PE 800, a five by seven machine, this is a nice step up. That was where I was um, gonna go. I was gonna get that, the 1600. Um, and I got talked into the persona. <laughs> Cause I'm very easily talked into buying things. But we're not gonna talk about that right now. <laughs> um, okay, so that, okay. Uh, sorry, phone was ringing again. Um, I gotta figure out a way how to not let people call while I'm on, <laughs> on YouTube. Um, Karen, the Persona comes with the free stand, just like the one I have. Yep. Um, so yes, if you get the Persona, get it through my link, you'll get the free stand. I'll give you the coupon code for $250 off and you'll get free training. Um, Okay, I need to put, okay, so Journey of Random Using says I need to use Do Not Disturb mode, but change your settings to none. Okay, all right, I'll remember that next week, guys. Thank you. <laughs> okay, um, 
So, all right, well, if there's nothing else y'all wanna talk about, I'm gonna go ahead and call it a night. Um, Olinda, yes, shipping is free. So another great thing. If you, number one, shipping is free. If you don't live in California, no tax either. So your final price is $4,750. But you need to buy, the problem is, is you're not just buying the machine, you have to buy the hoops too. And the hoops are 220. So like the, the coupon code I give you for that kind of covers, you. it's like you're getting the easy frame set of hoops for free. So you still probably come up to 5,000 total, but that's it. So that's your machine, your stand, your hoops, no shipping, no tax. So again, if you're interested in the persona, message me on Facebook. Um, or if you're on Instagram, I'm at Carly Bell on Instagram. You could direct message me there or you can email me at Carly Bell blog at gmail.com. I just put it there. I don't know if it worked. It looks funny. Okay. This would take me your quilting to the next level. Um, now you have to get one of your price. Okay. So that's another thing. I'm not into quilting. I want to though. And when I bought my machine, they told me that there is an option to get a free motion quilting attachment so that I can use my machine as a free motion quilter, like those big long arm machines. Uh, it, it's a table and a thing where you can move. So if you are a quilter, the persona is really awesome because you can get that attachment for it and do your own free motion quilting. Uh, Linda asks, can you get the magnet hoops and said, yes, these do take mighty hoops. Um, you can buy mighty hoops and you just get the ones with the frames that match the brother persona. I think those run around $150 per hoop. So you would just buy. The cool thing about the easy frames is I paid $220, but it came with four frames. So essentially it's like four hoops. And then I bought one more frame for an extra, I think, Forty-five-ish dollars. Um, so I got five hoops for a little what over two fifty, two sixty. Where a mighty hoop, it's one fifty for just one hoop size. Yes, Miss Social Deb. The the Persona is I think a really cool machine, especially for quilters, because it has the eight by eight frame. So if you like to make quilting blocks, it's the perfect size. Um, we can get that multi-positionable frame, which I'm, I got coming in the mail, um, to do eight by 14 areas and you can get the free motion attachment. Oh, wow, Kathy. Yeah, the short arm would allow sit sitting and standing, yes. <laughs> you need to go back to work. Yes, it's addicting. <laughs> very, very much is. So, okay, I'm going to go now. I hope everyone had a great night. I had so much fun. Thank you so very much for watching. I appreciate each and every one of y'all. I will be back next Friday with a tutorial on how to do a chest logo pocket design. And you can um, go to my website, carlybell.com, to buy the, lo the design I'm going to do next week. Um, BSD, does the persona cut jump stitches? Yes, it does. Another one of the things I love about it. So, um, yeah, so I will see y'all next week. Um, I got a cute design that says, maker of all the things. I'm going to do some more test stitches to make sure that it's digitized well and then I will upload it on my website so that if you want to buy the embroidery file and make it with me next Friday, you can. Um, I hope everyone has a great weekend. Thanks for watching our applique bib tutorial. And if you haven't already, join the Facebook group um, and give this video a thumbs up. Love you guys. I'll see y'all next week. Bye.